Welcome to the Pies of March 2023. This is a collaboration being hosted by Leanne from the Mennonite Farmhouse and Tony from Kettle Kitchen. I'm Julie, keeper of my home. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be making a blueberry pie. Wild blueberries from the state of Maine. It's going to be delicious. A little later on, I'm going to be telling you about a giveaway that is happening as part of this Pies of March collaboration. Lots and lots of prizes, so stay tuned for that. If you found my channel through this collaboration, welcome. I appreciate you stopping by and I hope you consider subscribing. I'd love to have you join my family of keepers. I create videos every week on simple living, homestead grown, and all things home. Now, let's make that pie. In my bowl, I have one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of sugar, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and I have here six tablespoons of butter. Now this isn't frozen, but I do prefer it frozen because it, it'll work a lot better, but it's been refrigerated. When you're making a pie crust, you really want all of your ingredients to be nice and cold just works a lot better and it doesn't help that we have a wood cook stove going in here so it's warm and my hands are warm so it's kind of softening up this butter as I go. Pie crust is not my specialty and I tend to stay away from pies because of that. I should do them more and practice makes perfect right? All right I'm just going to mix this up. You just want pea size chunks. And where we grated it, we pretty much have that. If you want to chop it up and add it to your flour mix, you can do that too. And then just use a pastry blender and blend it up. That works. And it also saves warming the butter up with your hands because like I said my hands are warm so if I'm not touching the butter I'm not melting it. Okay so now we are going to add some cold water just a little bit at a time and just mixing as we go. It's not going to take a lot it's probably going to take between four and six tablespoons and you really want cold water like I said because you want all of your ingredients to be nice and cold. Blueberries are something that grow wild here in Maine. Maine is quite well known for their wild blueberries. So I thought where we live in Maine, blueberry pie is the perfect pie for me to make for this collaboration. Okay, so we have all of this together, put it in plastic, and put it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. So you can wrap it in plastic, you can wrap it in wax paper, parchment paper, put it in a plastic bag, which is what I'm doing here, whichever you like. And then I did form it into a disc. I'm handing it off to my husband and he'll put it in the refrigerator. All right. We're going to move all of this aside and start working on our pie filling. What we need is a half a cup of sugar. This is just regular granulated sugar. You can use organic cane sugar if you like. And this is a third cup of regular all-purpose flour. And one tablespoon of clear gel. If you'd like, you can use cornstarch. I like clear gel and it's what I have on hand. So we're also going to add the zest of one lemon. You want to make sure when you are cooking a recipe that calls for lemon zest, wash your lemon thoroughly before zesting because you just don't know who else has touched this where it's been. Get all of our zest off of here. And now I'm going to split the lemon in half and I'm going to juice it. 
you want the juice of one whole lemon. So just juice it up really good. That's one. This is a really juicy lemon. Now that we've got those juiced, I'm gonna add that to our mix. Get this mixed around. I'm gonna add my blueberries. This is five and a half cups of blueberries. Now ideally you wanna use fresh, but fresh blueberries are not out, not wild main blueberries this time of year. They're out more towards the end of summer. So we froze our fresh berries and we're going to use those. And that'll work just the same. Might take a little bit longer to bake. Maine is the leading producer of low bush wild blueberries. They're native to northern New England and also Atlantic Canada. We're just a ways away from Canada, about um, a mile or two from the Canadian border. Almost 500 farmers manage about 36,000 acres of commercial wild blueberry land here in Maine. So. Like I said, we're pretty well known for our blueberries, so I thought blueberry pie would be a really great pie to make. Okay, so we have this all mixed. We're going to put this aside. I'm gonna keep it cold, and we're gonna get working on our crust. I'm going to lightly flour my counter. I probably haven't had this in the refrigerator for as long as I should, but we're going to roll it. Blueberries are the state fruit of Maine. Okay, I think I have this out enough, so let's get it in the pie dish. We have had this pie dish out on our porch. It's very cold here <laughs> in Northern Maine because it's still full on winter. So get that dish nice and cold. Okay, so here lies my reason why I don't make pies very often. It's this part, the fitting of the crust. I'm not real great at doing that. I feel like you see all the Martha Stewart's online making all these beautiful decorative pies and I would not be one of them. Not, uh, not my thing, but I would love for it to be. I guess that takes practice. I am going to cut some of this pie crust off, but not all of it because Crust is the best part, and I like to tuck it under and create a nice strong crust around the edge of my pie dish. You want to make sure that you've got all of this down in. You don't have it, you know, you have it down into your corners. You can lift on the side and push it towards the corner, you know, to the, towards the, the edge of your pie dish, just to make sure it's in there. Okay, I'm going to roll this under. I don't know if you can see how I'm doing that or not. I'm going to roll that under just to give it a little bit more stability. Another little fun fact is that Maine produces 99% of all the blueberries in the country. So it makes it the single largest producer of blueberries in the United States. Okay, so I have all of this rolled down and then I'm just going to push my thumb, put my two fingers like this, and I'm going to push my thumb to the center of that. And that is going to create a little decorative edge to my pie. Now this is going to be um, a, just the one crust pie because I am actually going to 
make a, cr a crumble topping. My husband loves a crumble topping and it's one less pie crust for me to have to make. <laughs> okay, now that we have the pie crust done, I am going to cover this with plastic and I'm gonna set it someplace cold and let it sit and set for a few minutes before I add my filling because I haven't made the crumble topping yet. If I put my filling in this right now, set it aside and make my crumble topping, this is going to get um, soggy and I don't want a soggy bottom. So I'm going to put some plastic on it and I'm going to set it outside. We have a large screen porch and it has an ice chest out there, an old fashioned ice chest that keeps things nice and cold. So that is where this is going to go until I make my crumble. Babe. I'm going to hand that off to my husband and he is going to take care of doing that. I'm going to clean this up and we're going to go ahead and make our crumble for the top of the pie. In this bowl, I have one and a half cups of white all-purpose flour. Okay, I am going to add half a cup of brown sugar. Just gonna mix that in a little bit. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. Now this is a crumb topping that I use for most everything. It makes a delicious crumb topping for not just pies, but a lot of other things. So it's my basic go-to recipe. I'm going to add a pinch of salt, not much more than a pinch because my butter is salted. So I don't wanna to add too much salt. Okay, so then I need one cup of oats. You can use quick oats, you can use old fashioned oats, you know, whichever one you wanna use. They both work, I've done them both. Okay, so that's one cup. I'm mix this in really well. And while I'm mixing it, I'm also breaking up any large clumps of brown sugar. Sometimes they clump up really well, like this one here is a big clump of brown sugar. All right, now I want to add one and a quarter sticks of melted butter. You can add softened butter. It's not gonna hurt anything to do that. I'm gonna stir that all up, get that mixed really, really well. It is going to be a bit of a wet crumble versus a drier one. You can see how wet it is and everything is incorporated. This way I know that the butter is in every bit of this and not just some of it. I feel like if I use um, softened butter, it doesn't get in all the nooks and crannies and I end up with dry spots. Okay, so now it's time to add our filling, our blueberry filling to our pie crust. All right, my husband just passed me my pie crust and it's nice and cold. We're going to add our, let me bring in a little closer. We're gonna add our blueberry mixture into this. Look at all those beautiful blueberries. Blueberries are heart healthy and it's actually said that they can help keep you young so hey, why not eat your blueberries? There's lots of good health benefits around blueberries. They're very, very good for you. Okay. I'm gonna get this filling moved all around here. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. I can't wait to taste this. Okay, now this is the part that is the non-technical part. You just grab handfuls and you sprinkle it over your pie. If you have children, this is a great dish for them. They love rolling things out. We have granddaughters that love rolling pie crust. 
They love doing all of this stuff, especially, you know, crumbling this up and putting it over the pie. It's a lot of fun for them. And I love involving kids in the kitchen. It's good for them. And I find that they eat better if they're involved in helping make the food, whether it be a dessert or a meal. I just want to you know, make a really good crumble on here. You don't, don't be concerned about using all of this because you probably will not use all of it. You just want to cover up a lot of the blueberries. And if a few are peeking out, don't worry, it's fine. There, I think that's good. Now we are going to get this into the cook stove, and which we've put at a high temperature. It's pretty warm in here, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so that cook stove is heated. So we're gonna put this in there. If you're doing this in a regular oven, you wanna do it in a preheated 400 degree oven for about 25 minutes, then turn your oven down to 375 and cook it for about 30 more minutes. It all depends on your oven. Every oven is different. Some heat hotter, so it'll be done quicker, but just keep checking it. And uh, once your crust is nice and golden and everything is set, you wanna pull it out and let it cool. So let's get this in the oven. Okay, so the crumble topping that you have left, I have a little bit left, you can see. Not a lot, but probably a cup and a half. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to put it into a Ziploc bag. I'm just gonna take my fingers. Now I have labeled this baggy crumble topping so that I don't wonder what this is later. You wanna label and date always whenever you put anything into the freezer because at that current moment, you might think you're gonna remember what it is, but a month down the road, you may not. Okay. Take the air out, zip it, and I'm going to toss this into my freezer for the next time I need some. After about 10 minutes in the oven, I am going to cover my crust with a pie shield, just to make sure it doesn't brown too much or burn. If you don't have one of these, that's fine. Just take some tin foil and tear pieces of it and wrap it around your crust and that'll work perfectly. pie is out of the oven. If you're cooking it in the um, conventional oven, like I said, you want to put it in at 400 degrees for 25 minutes and then turn it down to 375 and cook it for up to 30 minutes. Mine took probably just over an hour. Um, that was in the cook stove. I rotated it constantly because the firebox is on one side and the cook stove. So if you know, we always have to rotate it to um, get an even bake over the top because, you know, the heat being on the, the firebox side is going to brown a lot quicker. So uh, it takes a lot more attention when you're doing it in the cook stove. But the conventional oven, just keep your eye on it. You want the filling to bubble because that is going to thicken your pie. My recipe actually calls for cornstarch. I don't have any cornstarch. I always use clear gel. You can use equal amounts of clear gel to what you know the recipe calls for in cornstarch. If your recipe calls for clear gel, you cannot replace that with cornstarch. So it only works one way. So where my recipe calls for cornstarch, it's interchangeable, I can use clear gel. Same amounts across the board. I just can't do it the other way. I like clear gel better. It's usually what I have on hand. Once in a while, I will have cornstarch, but not that often. Now that that is done, I'm gonna let it sit for a good three hours before cutting into it, because you don't wanna cut into it hot or the whole inside is not gonna have time to set and it's just gonna run. 
and make a little mess unless you like it like that I mean you could dig in if that's the way you like it but if you want real good slabs of pie that you can just go in and get without all of the running in of the filling then let it cool completely for like three to five hours if you can do it overnight the next day it's going to be even better i'm probably going to set ours outside on our ice chest or in the ice chest and let it cool out there for a while and it'll actually cool a lot quicker out there we still have a lot of snow on the ground the outhouse is uh yeah, there's no longer a path going out there. <laughs> we actually don't use it in the winter. Uh, summertime, yes, but not in the winter. We still have clothes hanging out on the line. It's a beautiful, beautiful day to hang clothes. Snow is melting. The sun is warm, so the clothes are drying. It's just beautiful here in northern Maine. Okay, so as promised, I did say that I would fill you in on the giveaway that is happening related to this uh, collaboration of the Pies of March. So what you want to do to enter into this giveaway, you want to leave a comment. I'm reading this so that I can get it right for you. Leave a comment on all participating channels and a winner will be randomly selected from all the, the comments across the entire playlist of channels, okay? Leave, leave a comment on every channel that is involved with the Pies of March collaboration. I will leave the playlist in my description box so you can go down there and you can see the playlist. There's lots and lots. I think there's 32 or 33 total channels involved in this, and the pies are amazing. These are pies that are sweet, and savory so you have to go look at these I I'm telling you I haven't gotten through all of these but there's a pie for every day of March and then some there's a lot of talented channels out there so be watching them okay so once you've commented on there your your one of these comments it's gonna be randomly selected and you will win a $100 Amazon gift card so what you need to do is start watching that playlist, start commenting on all of those channels and follow them as well. There's a lot of really great channels out there. The pie is cooled off and oh my word, it looks so good. So it literally has been outside cooling off in the ice chest for several hours. So it's nice and cold. I'm going to slice into it and we just ate dinner, so this is dessert for us. See how nice and golden this is? The crust is nice and golden. I love this crumble topping. Um, let's just slice right in. Oh goodness, it looks good. And I know that I'm going to be really glad that I let this sit because it gave it a chance to really set up well. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see how this looks. Look at this. This is perfect blueberry pie. This is why you want to let it sit before cutting into it. Okay, this one goes to Joe. And let's get the other one out. Here, this is yours. This goes to the bottom of yours. Okay, let's get another piece out. Okay, let's get it into my plate. I want to show this to you. Look how good that looks. You see that? He's digging in, so I'm going to say that this is good. How do you like it? Good? Very good. Mmm. <clears throat> I like the fact that the berries don't run out. The filling. This is so good. I like that 
the filling is really firm as well. I mean, it just has such good flavor. I do want to say you can add cinnamon to the filling if you'd like to add cinnamon or nutmeg. I just like it um, like this, minus the cinnamon. I do like cinnamon, I just don't like it in my blueberry pie. I want to thank Leanne and Tony for inviting me to join in on this collaboration. And I want to thank you for joining me on my channel. I hope you consider subscribing. I'd love to have you join my family of keepers. So don't forget to go visit the other channels that are also in this collaboration. And also, don't forget the giveaway. That is going to happen on April 3rd at 6 p.m. on Leanne's channel, The Mennonite Farmhouse. So be sure to check everybody's channel out, comment so that you can be entered into that giveaway, and get watching those videos. Start making some pies. <laughs> and until next time. Mm. I'm not much for blueberry pie, but this is good. I like pie in general.